Yo, long hairs. Welcome to episode 99 of Let It Ride. Here we talk long hair in business, advocate for hair equality, and celebrate men's long manes with hair whips and high fives. If you're a guy with long hair, you're in the right place. Yeah. Here with El Moreno and El Spencerino Hello. at the Long Hairs Global Headquarters. I'm El Rubio, and our guest on today's show shares a unique and special connection with the Long Hairs. Because on August 26 in Northern Virginia, she will attempt to set a new Guinness World Records title for the most hair donated to charity by an individual, what? which will require a minimum donation of five feet no. of hair, no. and which we have been pleased to learn she will be donating to children with hair loss. A professional world-ranked squash player and coach, she is widely recognized as the longest-haired athlete in the world. What? She is a global advocate for women in sports, having founded the, Z the Zahab Naha Foundation, helping female student-athletes in Pakistan pursue their studies and athletics who are otherwise limited by poverty and lack of resources. Joined on the show by her media assistant and world record attempt coordinator, Ria Saran, after a staggering 17 years of hair growth, she measures in at a mind-bending six feet, three inches of hair. She is the longest haired athlete and a force for female athletes around the world. She is the world record hopeful, Miss Zahab Kamal Khan. Welcome to Let It Ride. Ah, what? <laughs> Wow, thanks so much for joining the show. This is a special one, and I got to say, everyone just wants to see the hair. Would you mind just standing yeah. up and showing us the hair a little bit? Yes, sure. <laughs> Amazing. We can't even see it all. Oh, that is world-class <laughs> hair right there. So awesome. Absolutely world-class hair. Unfathomable. <laughs> How do you even measure it? Do you use a tape measure? Do you, uh, I, I don't even know how you do that. Yeah, you use a tape measure kind of like this um, and have her stand up on a stool so, because it's, it's taller than herself. So she has to be standing higher uh, for us to measure it to the ground. And then she'll hold the tape measure on her head and then I pull it all the way down to measure it. Wow. Amazing. I, I never thought I would ever have to ask somebody this, but have you ever actually tripped on your own hair? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Sometimes when I wash and like when my hair is red, so mm -hmm. it's like more on on the floor. So mm -hmm. sometimes I just trip. Wow. So with that much hair, that much length, like the first thing that comes to my mind is just manage managing, you know, I mean, my hair is barely past my shoulders and I have a hard time with tangles and getting the product all over and everything. So, I mean, how much shampoo are you going through and how do you manage the, the tangles and everything? It's a large shampoo. And yeah. I would say like I handle my hair with different way. I just put bun on top. Then I just open a little bit and I just take all the tangles out and then I open a little bit and then I just brush my hair mm. and I keep going it and I keep putting it down. So I don't do it at once. I just put bun on top and then I keep going it. You have oh, to okay. do it section by section. Yes. Wow. <laughs> do you have to do that every day? Not every day. I don't wash my hair every day. I just do it every second day. Wow. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. How did you come to keep growing your hair for 17 years? I was going to ask if you always had long hair, but obviously it's been a while. Uh, my journey starts when like, I was 13 years old and my father from the beginning, he don't like the short hairs. So I used to have like shoulder length all the time. But when I came for squash and then he said, it's my dream if you make a world record, like Guinness World Record. And I said, okay, fine. And then his dream to make my hair longer, longer day by day. And then I just keep trimming my hairs like one inch kind of thing every three months and four months and then it keep growing and now i am ready for the attempt the record how short is it going to be when you finally it, do it, cut it it's like short till my shoulder okay now, so you'll still a have a little bit of that. <laughs> it'll be kind of like this long okay like I, I, it left like one foot three inches okay okay 
So you guys have it all figured out of exactly where to cut for the record and you feel yeah. pretty confident you got this locked in or, or is there pressure? Or what, how are you guys feeling right now? I mean, she's the one who uh-huh. motivated me to do it. And it's still every morning, she gives me some motivation to cut my hair that you look so pretty when it's short yeah. and it's less work for you. And then you look so cute and stuff like that. <laughs> But I get more motivated when she is with me all the time and we work on day by day. And I am making my mind to keep ready and cut my hair okay. on the 26th of August. Yeah, a lot of mental preparation for the big, yes. for the big cut. Um, now, how did you get like involved with the record or, or even you know think it was possible and get linked up with Guinness? How did that all come, come about? So... I met Zahab about a year ago, and uh, when I met her, I mean, obviously her hair was already like six feet long, yeah. and I've never seen somebody with hair that long before. Yeah. I figured that, like, if it was that long, there's probably a record that you can set with Guinness. Um, and so in looking through some of their records, um, she knew that she did want to cut it, and that whenever she cut it, she was going to donate it to charity. And it was perfect because they have a record where you can donate your hair to charity and um, set the world record yeah. for most hair by an individual. So that seemed like a great one to go for. And that's what we've decided to do. Now, what is the current standing record? So there isn't a current standing record, but Guinness is able to set the requirements for the minimum. Okay. Uh, Originally, when we found the record, it was a four feet minimum to cut your hair. And so that's so I was planning on donating um, like 50 inches or four and a half feet. Um, and but actually earlier this week, we got a message from Guinness saying we have been doing our research. We have found like a bunch of people with long hair and we've decided that we're upping the minimum to five feet. Uh, mm. We know you can't grow an extra foot of hair overnight, but thankfully she has an extra foot of yeah. hair to give. So yeah. she will be donating five feet. Okay. Wow. Sounds and familiar. The main thing is she did not even ask me, are you giving five feet or not? She, oh. doing it herself. <laughs> she just said, you're doing it. <laughs> yes. It's already done. She said, oh yeah, that's okay. She's got six feet. We can do Yeah, we'll do the five. No problem. Green light, green light. Yes. So you will actually be setting the precedent for yeah. most hair donated. No one has ever done this before. And at this point, cutting off five feet, I would defy anyone to be able to match that. That's that's just five feet of hair. It's incredible. Just insane. Well, but you did just say that there is some other people, right, that are kind of going for it. So you have competition, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, there aren't other people that have applied through Guinness, but uh, when Guinness does their research, they look at other events that seem like they're there could be a possibility to set a record and that's how they decide on what their minimum should be. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So five feet going for the record. Uh, you have decided to donate to children with hair loss. How did you come to learn about children with hair loss and how come you you've chosen them as the, the benefactor of your hair donation? So we did a lot of research on a bunch of different charities, talked to a couple of them. Um, and when we came across children with hair loss, we saw the record that you guys had done with them and thought it would be pretty cool to partner with a charity that has had experience with Guinness and children with hair loss seem to be, uh, very well run, very well organized on, um, their hair donation process and for being able to accept the record too. Awesome. Have you guys had, uh, been on the phone with them and got to meet some of the, some of the staff there? Yeah, we've been able to talk to Regina over okay. at Hair Loss, um, and she was amazing. She's the one that connected us with you. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's been great. So there is going to be an event. It's on August 26th. Tell us a little bit what the event is going to look like. Yeah, so that event on August 26th, it's going to be around 60 people. Uh, we're going to invite... Um, a lot of family and friends. Um, we've been collecting donations to help pay for holding the event and working with Guinness. So we're going to invite all the people who made a donation and sponsors as well. Um, we're also making it open to the media. So um, sending out to local TV and news 
stations to come to the event. Um, and then Zahab's dad will be there to actually be the one to cut her hair. Oh, nice. That's, that's, gonna happen. Yeah. that's what his dream. So I want him to cut and feel how it looks like. <laughs> that's phenomenal. That's outstanding. I love that. Uh, El Rubio here has kind of a similar story when he donated his hair. Yep, my mom made the first couple of cuts when I donated mine uh, at the Great wow. Cut in 2019. I was just going to ask, is there going to be a ceremonious haircutting? It's all going to lead up to that moment, I'm sure, when you finally cut it. You brought up a good point about working with Guinness, and we certainly didn't realize this in advance, but it ain't free and it is pretty pricey, in fact, to get Guinness World Records involved with your record attempt. Hmm. So uh, I understand from our earlier conversations, it's going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $6,000 for you to raise for Guinness involvement and the other costs of the event. And you have started a GoFundMe where you're fundraising to pay it to cover the cost of the event. Is that right? Yes. yes, that is correct. And the reason it's around $6,000 is because Zahab is actually going for two records, uh, the most hair donated to charity by an individual, and then also for fun, uh, the most hair clips on your head. Oh, most uh, hair clips. No that way. Like a, wait, <laughs> have you been doing your neck exercises? Because it sounds like that's going to start <laughs> getting heavy. You do it 1500 hair clips. What? Wow. <laughs> That is amazing. The risk of whiplash must be through the roof. <laughs> so wait, are the are you doing the hair clip record in the lead, or will it be on the same day as the actual hair cutting? No, we will be doing the hair clip record before the event. Um, it takes a while to put fifteen hundred hair clips. In. Oh yeah. So figure that might not be the best idea for a live event. Um, <laughs> we're going to try to do that one um, actually within the next ten days. Okay. All right. Now, is that something you can announce both of them on one on the same even? OK. And yeah. then is that something you're going to like video record and send to Guinness? Is, is that mm -hmm. how it works? OK. Yeah. Wow. How many yeah, people? Like two, two evidence with you and some right. video recording and photo photographs. Oh, yeah. We know a lot about <laughs> the evidence part of setting a Guinness world record. We had an elaborate multi camera set up at our event and a recording wow. whole system and weighing of each individual's <laughs> hair. And we had to have everyone's ID and sign off and age verification. It was a lot. <laughs> That's great. Wow. That's great. But it's kind of like the, the, you know, fun part, I guess, again, is, is like you have to have the technical kind of aspects dialed in, you know, for you guys, it's a little, you, you know, it's just, kind of one person and you got a lot of other people involved, but we had like a, a hundred thousands of people contributing hair to us. So it was like trying to manage it all and track it back to every person and prove that it was a real person. It got pretty complicated, pretty quick. <laughs> and to the, I can only imagine doing it for thousands yeah. of people. How and, long it take you? Like how much time it take you to do it? Well, we let lead, uh, collecting the hair like actually receiving it so we did a, a we did two things we had a, a an event which was the day of where this was the day we were going to set the record right and that's where anybody who wanted to come and cut and donate that day they could and we had hundreds of people come and do that we also had another thousand fifteen hundred people who mailed us their hair yeah. and we were yeah. collecting that mailed hair for probably roughly like two months and then all that mail in hair had to be processed and, and, you know, sorted, sorted and weighed, and, weighed and, and, and accounted to the right donor and everything. So it was uh, like the mail ins were one thing and then the live cuts were another thing. And then all that hair was getting weighed the day of like, it was 16 hours of just weighing hair constantly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then the whole weighing was a whole nother process to figure out wow and we had to get a special scale <laughs> it was awesome the intensity <laughs> was high level yeah uh to the credit of guinness world records though and the really really challenging standards is it really protects the integrity of the record mm -hmm. so when it is so closely measured and you have to follow the specific guidelines and so forth you, you can't just and, you know, send in an application said, oh, yeah, we got 500 pounds of hair. Uh, they really dive into the, the record and the process and all the details. So, you know, you really know that that is the, the world record. Now, did you ladies also, is there a chance that you can 
I would do weight. Is there like an individual weight record with the length too? Or what, is that not a factor? So there isn't one with the weight right now. It's mostly okay. by length. Um, it's possible to open a new category. I would say, I think we're probably better off going for length though. Just yeah. given that her hair is so long, but it is also kind of thin. So okay. going for weight wouldn't be as effective. Gotcha. My hair is silky. It's not like thick here. Okay. Yep. Yep. So this not only would be an individual record, but it can also potentially, if I understand right, it could be a lifetime record where you'll donate the five feet now this time around, but then in the future, you could continue adding to it with future donations. Yes. No way. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so you could be at 20 feet of hair, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe the weight could come in too at that point. Uh -huh. I mean, After at that point, yes. I mean, <laughs> for now, she could do five feet this year and then join you at the Great Cut in 2024. There we go. <laughs> now that is a great idea. That's what we're talking about. It would be awesome to have another world record holder in the presence of the event. Yes, sure. <laughs> you would be a VIP, a guest of honor. Yeah. <laughs> and probably you will be making the largest donation, although actually maybe not, because if you cut it to your shoulders right now, it'll still be pretty long by then. Who knows? You might be in the running. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on how fast her hair grows. Yeah. I would assume you have some world record growing hair, too, because... <laughs> Your hair doesn't hasn't stopped, you know. You don't you haven't hit a terminal length, which is what a lot of people who go grow their hair out. So you have some really amazing uh, genetics for your hair. I believe I can <laughs> donate you guys more, like two feet, ex except like two feet more. But wow. let's see how much I have on twenty twenty four. Yeah amazing so it's going to be an emotional experience cutting uh i mean that hair has been with you uh one you know some of us talk about how the the hair at the ends you know that was with you five years ago six years ago like this hair has been part of your experience and part of your journey mm -hmm. that hair i mean you've had little trims you said but that hair has been with you for the better part of 17 years now yeah. uh you're just getting lots of in encouragement from ria and uh, how nice it's going to look <laughs> being a little yeah. bit shorter Yes, she's the one who encouraged me all the time. And That's it definitely takes a lot less time to take a shower. Oh, yeah. That is going to be nice. I'm sure it's going to feel very strange, like the first time, at, you know, a couple of days after you I rub in your hands. And I wake up in the morning with yeah. short hairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm well, I my days from now, like how many days I left with these hairs. And yeah. I have them again. <laughs> The final countdown here. It's one month. Uh, today is the 27th. And okay. it's uh, so we're inside one month to the big event here. Very exciting. Uh, I'm curious. Just tell us a, a couple of more details about living with hair of this length. Uh, you must have to tie it up every day. How about when you play squash? Uh, you're a professional squash player. Want to ask about that. Also, do you tie it up? What do you have to do on a daily basis just to manage it outside of, you know, shampoo and conditioner and what you already told us? So I just do it like a bun all the time. And before doing that bun, I put high pony and then I just wrap a bun and then put clips on it. And, but I put like side clips too. So it gets like hold it properly the whole day. And I have to open it again and again between my games as well sometimes. But it's, it's like hard for me all the time. Especially like in a squash, when I go with the matches, yes, every break, when I come outside, if it's like 90 seconds break, 30 seconds to take me to the water, but one minute, like 60 seconds make me to make my hair again. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just going to ask, how long does it take to do it? So at least six, 60 seconds to do that yeah. routine to tie it up into a bun. Yeah, it's like same thing. I just tie it again and then do it my bun properly. And then I go back to the squash door. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and then you're running around back and forth. So it shakes free. And then yeah. you got hair spilling out all over the place in your face. Yeah. You can't see what shot you're going to hit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Have you ever missed a shot because you couldn't see because of your hair? Um, no, it's not come to my face. But one time it happens to me like I was playing very serious game and it was like two all and like it was about to like uh, seven all somewhere 
and suddenly my hair get loose and it is start losing slowly slowly and my bun comes here in front of me when uh, i run it goes back and then it come back here and when i yeah. run it goes back and come back <laughs> so then the referee was he was nice person he gave me a break for a few seconds he said can you please tie your hair again it's fine we can give you a break <laughs> nice Good. now we'll get into the hair ties conversation i wonder how come it comes out just does it depend on the hair ties that you use? Or are you using clips and hair ties? Can you secure it more firmly, perhaps with a, a higher standard hair tie? Yes, a thick one. Yes. <laughs> Not with a little, like a thin one. It has to be a thick one. Okay. <laughs> well, we just met a few days ago and we have an order in process. We're going to send you some of our world famous hair ties for guys. And with any luck, hopefully those will prevent the hair from coming out during your squash match ever again. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and let you know. Uh, we can't wait to have a professional athlete demonstrating the use in the uh, of our hair ties on the court. Mm. Especially uh, when it's intense as squash. Yeah, I was going to ask a little bit. It's It's a pretty intense sport. There's a lot of movement. It's really quick. It's, yes, it's really uh, quick sports. I mean, it's similar to racquetball. Is yes. that right? Yes. Yeah. So just very quick, very fast paced sport. For anyone who's listening and me who has never played, <laughs> uh, just give us, tell us a little bit more about the sport. I know it is similar to racquetball, but what else could you describe for a layman? So a squash is a, like similar to racket sport, and but a squash has like size is small than racquetball, racquetball uh, court. And uh, the racket size is also different from that. And it's like more high intense game. And uh, like m mostly people here in America, uh, it's now it's getting much more famous. And yes, and then we have different categories of championship all the years. And we have it's starting from the club events. And then it goes through with junior tournaments, junior events, and then it goes through with senior tournaments. And we have practice sessions, different sessions, and it's it's really popular in America now. Okay, yeah, I've seen courts out there. She the also plays squash. <laughs> she played with me. She's my student. Oh, really? You're learning, Ria? <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, I uh, picked up squash last August and uh, have been playing with Sahab this year. That's how we met. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I my brother was playing first, and then I started playing, and we both got really into it. So my parents also started playing. So awesome. whole family is a squash in. No. Yeah, all in. <laughs> it is getting more popular, <laughs> and the yeah. ball is a little bit smaller. Is that what you said? Then yeah, it's, yeah, it's about this big. But it goes really fast, right? Yeah, ricochets off the wall, and all that sort of thing. It's. Is it dangerous if you get hit? I mean, you can, it, can, it hurts if you get hit. Yes, it hurts you and it gives you a mark if it hurts, <laughs> if it hits you. Man, just taking welts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like paintballing, but worse. <laughs> uh, so if we could ask you a little bit about the foundation that you established, uh, what I read was that since 20, th excuse me, since 2018, when it was established, your foundation has cultivated donors to serve more than 60 children uh, with monthly rent, tuition assistance, things like that, so they can pursue their education and athletics. Tell us a little bit more about your foundation. So I started my foundation like three years ago. And it makes me to do this foundation all together work because I suffer a lot when I was back to my country. And I see a lot of kids, they don't have things to play the squash. They come to play squash, but their rackets, they don't have play the, uh, to play the rackets. Then their shoes are not proper. And then the most of the kids, they don't go to schools. So I wish I could give them something. So I start donating them from my from my family and that's how I start like properly start to start my foundation and then from there I start giving them and motivate them to go to the school we can give you the fees we can help you with that and start motivating them to come forward with your dreams and 
then we give them like uh, whatever their dreams is to be become and then they love to play squash and they love to play badminton they are more we have in pakistan at cricket so i i want them to fulfill their dreams so that's how i introduce my foundation awesome just awesome now speaking of the foundation how can anybody listening you know maybe find out more contribute help you guys out you can go to the social pages we have facebook page we have instagram zahab and neha foundation and you can go through it and see our work what we doing is and from there you can find our link and you can donate us beautiful and it you said that you've helped over 60 children that's with various different things different sports different activities that they're involved with yes uh, how- how did you get linked up with those specific children? Like, how did you know who to send the funds to or, or where the help was most needed? So uh, we prefer uh, taking kids with, first of all, we look around their background check and then we provide them all the paperwork and we see their fa- the parents' background check. And from there, we decide that, okay, this kid needs to be come forward and, he, he loves to play something, he wants to study, he wants to be, he, he loves to go to school. And, but in some reason, like parents, it stopped their schooling because they cannot afford. So from there, we start looking around. Wow, over 60 kids so far, that's really something else. <laughs> Impacting lives right there. That's what it's about, you know, changing the world one kid at a time. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal, yeah. great work. Great work. And uh, hey, I'm sure your donation here is going to inspire a lot of those kids. I hope and my dream is to uh, empower women and girls and be role model for them and they can motivate and they can come forward and I wish they fulfill their dreams and I'm standing for them all the time. Fantastic. Well, I hope that we can help you generate some donations, uh, not just on your GoFundMe for your upcoming world record attempt, but also for your foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, El Moreno and myself are really pleased uh, to let you know that we very much would like to sponsor your world record attempt uh, for a donation of $500. And we'd also like to make a donation of $500 to your foundation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's, That's great. And uh, we'll also, of course, promote uh, our show here, having you on the show and your world record attempt. And we'll see if some of our community could come through with some donations as well. They're generally very kind and generous. And I'm sure we could generate a little bit of additional uh, help from that front as well. So we'll do what we can. You got the long hairs behind you. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. And I wish you all come to my event and motivate me and come <laughs> work with us. <laughs> You're going to do awesome. I just see the confidence. It's going to be a special day. It sounds like, especially between you and your dad, because uh, of just the story you told us here. And I'm sure he's going to be more emotional than you when yes, he cuts yes, that hair. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. that's going to be a special moment. You guys are going to get to have, and everyone there is going to get to witness it. Um, uh, it's El Rubio is going to be around the vicinity. So I don't know. He might be able to make it out. We'll see. <laughs> we will. Ha- the long hairs will be represented at the event. Whoever we have uh, who can step in and either make the trip or have a local ambassador come down for a uh, media appearance and some support. But uh, we'll definitely have some, you know, representation there and we'll make sure that you have plenty of support from the long hairs. Thank you so much. That would be incredible. Uh, I had a question. Uh, being r- recognized widely as the longest haired athlete. Tell us a little bit more about that. So uh, in Pakistan, there is a me- uh, me- media channel called ARY. They introduced me first time with my hair. Before that, I used to play with everyone, but no one knows that I have a such longest hair. But the day they announced that we have a girl and she has the longest hair, so they just give me this title, longest hair at least. Mm. And in Pakistan and then around the world, no one had the longest hair. 
And then I tried to do this longest year athlete uh, racket attempt, but there's no category like that. So that's why we choose to do it as a donation. Okay. And no challengers have come forth to uh, claim the title. So unless someone comes <laughs> with longer hair and athlete, then you're going to keep the title. Yeah. Take that LeBron James. She's better than you. <laughs> I did a similar. I claimed I had the most hair whips in the Grand Canyon and there was really no documentation, but I haven't seen any challengers come forth. So I'm still still holding that hair whips in the stands. Grand Canyon. The record stands. <laughs> How many was it? Uh, 14 consecutive days of hair whipping in the Grand Canyon. Wow. <laughs> individual whips weren't counted no it wasn't consecutive it wasn't 24 hours a day hair whipping it was just a session of hair whips in the grand canyon for 14 consecutive days but uh there were some pretty legendary hair whips out there i'll tell you that one well uh guys any other oh go ahead Spencer. no 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 go ahead uh you mentioned your uh, social media channels for your foundation, but just give you a moment to tell us the name of the GoFundMe. We'll link these things up on the blog post also, but could you tell us again the GoFundMe and then your social media handles where our followers could connect with you? Yeah, so Zahab's social media handles on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter are at Zahab Kamal Khan. Uh, so Z A H A B K A M A L K H A N, and then on TikTok, same thing at Zob Kamalkan Zero. All right, got it. Is there any other websites or anything you guys would like to share? Yeah, and so then that GoFundMe link we can send over to you as well. Um, it is to uh, help Zob achieve her world record. And I saw that you're about three thousand dollars, or maybe thirty eight hundred, towards the six hundred, or excuse me, the six thousand dollar goal. Yes, we are at about thirty eight hundred, and hoping to get to six hundred. Sorry, six thousand. Um, and actually, with your five hundred dollar donation, that will bring us to forty three hundred. So we are seventeen hundred away now. <laughs> All right, getting that close. sounds getting achievable. Close. Sounds yes. achievable to me. Maybe we could bring another five hundred from the. From the crew, from the team, from the, from the community, yeah, from the community. We'll see. No doubt. Thank you so much. That's that's amazing. Well, I uh, hope everyone gets a chance to connect with you. We are going to find out uh, how we can be represented. The long hairs that is at the event on August 26th. If you're listening and you're in Northern Virginia right now, maybe we'll see you there. We need a we need a volunteer that we can count on. Uh, Thanks for coming on the show. It was fantastic. Uh, we wish you tons of luck in the world record attempt. Uh, we'll all be sad to see you cut your hair, but excited that you're doing it and donating it to children with hair loss. Thank and you we'll so see you much in for having us. Say again, Spencer. Sorry. And we'll see you in 2024 at the Great Cut. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Both of you. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, ladies. Thank you so much for the time. And, uh, and telling us your story. This is just phenomenal. And I think it's really going to resonate with our community. They're going to love to hear this. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all the support. All right. Thanks again for joining. Let it ride. And until next time. See ya. See ya.